Down, 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 With your host, Vince. And now, we're on the air. Hello everybody down there in internet land, I'm Vince, this is the VI Podcast and you are listening to the third ever episode here on our English side of things and what a show we got for you this time. I had a wonderful opportunity to interview a music business legend, he is Graham Bonnet, you know him from Alcatraz and you know him from Rainbow and and just playing with, well, pretty much every guitarist that ever mattered and he's he's been in in their groups and on their albums and Graham Bonnet is currently in Finland he's on tour so let me just really quick give you the t- dates so you can come and check those gigs out first tomorrow on the 14th he's gonna be right here in Tampere at Klubi and then from there on He's doing back-to-back shows on the 15th. He's in Helsinki, Virgin Oil. On the 16th, House of Rock, Kovola. And on the 17th, Osmos Cosmos Bar. That's in Imatra. So if you're around, definitely go check him out. Because it's going to be a trip. And yeah, I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer. So let's go down to Cumulus. And let's have ourselves a good old sit down. Okay, I'm here in uh, Cumulus Tampere. I am sitting with the legendary Graham Bonnet. Welcome to the show. Legendary. Thank you. Yeah, well, hello. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is, I don't know how much internet radio you do nowadays, but uh, this is only our third show, so uh, you're in a pretty new cast. We're still learning what the, what yeah, the heck yeah. this is about. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, I've done a few, actually. I've done a few in uh, California and all over the place. Yeah, so I'm used to it, so don't worry. No. All right, you're you're gonna guide me through it. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Let, I don't know. <laughs> let, let's see where we end up. All right, so uh, you're here in Finland for uh, what? Four dates? Uh, yes, yes. So I leave uh, next Sunday. So uh, we're playing here in uh, Tampere tomorrow, and the other gigs I can't remember the names of, but she does. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the other gigs? What's the other gigs? There's four. You know. You know what we can do. I can. I can. There's Helsinki. Kovola and Imatra. There we go. All right. I, I'm gonna put the actual dates and actual places uh, in an after show. So uh, we're gonna oh, okay. get those out. Okay. So that that'll be that'll yeah. be fine. Uh, I wanted to ask. You've been here a couple of times. What is it about oh, yeah. Finland that keeps Graham Bonnet just coming back for more? Well, because I like the band I play with. The, the band are great and. Uh, They place a lot of people over here as well as uh, uh, Daffy, their lead guitar player, told me. Um, th- they've got a DVD coming out very soon, and they played in front of nine uh, thousand people, I believe it was, and it's where Pink Floyd did their concert. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the place, but uh, really can't remember. Can't yeah, remember. Yeah. I'll put that in a post also. Yeah, 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 but but they're a great band, and they know all my songs backwards. And uh, Daffy got in touch with me probably about seven years ago so i've been coming here on and off for about seven years uh, last year was the last uh, was uh, the one year i didn't come um but uh, most years we play together if uh, the venues are available or we think we're going to get a crowd you know it's it's um it's very difficult today though to to find an audience for music which is from the 1980s you know Uh, but there's a, a development among younger kids now that come to see concerts. You know, I've seen kids that are, you know, like 16, 17 years old, and they know all the words of the songs better than I do. You know, I've got them written down on pieces of paper on the stage. I'm going, oh, that one, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, it's turning around, and the same in America as well. The only place in America where it's hard to play is uh, California. Uh, the last place we played there was House of Blues about two months ago in Hollywood, and uh, we played at uh, some other theaters there, but uh, you wouldn't know them here, but House of Blues, I think everybody knows, um, which was great, because it was in Hollywood, and so we get kind of a crowd, and we play, <coughs> sometimes play the East Coast as well, um, you know, so we go to New York, you know, areas in New York, but um, 
Most of our work is, is over in Europe. I just got back from Russia two weeks ago on my own. I did a solo thing with um, an, another band uh, over there. It was like a jam session. It was a bunch of different people with um, uh, the guitar player from Alice Cooper, who used to be Alice Cooper, Ryan Roxy, and uh, the AC DC drummer. And his name is Escape. Oh, I don't think he's going to listen to this show, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, with, with him as well. And the point of the show was for local bands to play with people they like, uh, music they like, you know. So I was invited over and I did like five tunes. We all did like a little bit each. Yeah, yeah. But the local bands were probably about, ooh, I don't know, seven other bands on and they all got to play with their favorite drummer and their favorite guitar player blah 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 yeah. that sounds like a really great opportunity yeah, it's good yeah because you know alice cooper and acdc everybody likes them and uh so and rainbow and you know all, all your stuff. Rainbow, well yeah, rainbow as well yeah so um uh ryan roxy he he from alice's band he he played a couple of tunes with me so it was kind of cool it was all mix and max everybody was oh shall we play this one? Oh, we'll play this one and uh, all the uh the younger bands in in that in russia in moscow it was that they got to play and they were all over the moon because they're playing with their hero guitar players etc yeah definitely definitely it was a, but it was a big jam session it was a bit of a mess it was a bit like where are we you know Well, maybe that that kind of thing is sort of supposed to be that. Yeah, yeah, it, but it was funny because all the audience are all smiling away and clapping. You know, they they, they liked it even if, if some of it was a bit messed up. So maybe we should have something like that in Finland also. Yeah, I, uh, we can mess up. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But sort of like similar. It's like get. Well, yeah, it's it's a good idea. It's a very good idea, and they're starting to do that. In fact, with a there's a TV show in in uh, Los Angeles they're doing where where people can come on and sing with their favorite singer. It's called Duet, I think. And uh, so, you know, any kid who is a singer can come on and sing with their favorite artist from way back or who, who, who is new, you know, you know, whoever, you know. And that's a new show that's coming out. So it's sort of like a talent show, but it's not, you know. Yeah, it's more maybe in a good fun yeah, kind of idea. casual, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not like life and death. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, my worst no, competition. No. Oh no, that's terrible. Get out of here. You know. <laughs> yeah, we got enough of those. It's cruel, isn't it? It's so. It's it so. Cr it destroys them. And, and it, it's not like um, what it's really to be out there. No, I know. I mean, the, the the most terrible singers in the world can be very, very famous. You know, I mean, I'm not going to name anybody, but it but it can happen. You don't have to be a great singer to be a great artist. Yeah, well, you got to be maybe interesting and. <laughs> And, and, and I've noticed that you do have to be a hard worker in this business. You've yeah. got to work your ass off just yeah, all the time. Especially now. Especially now, you know, when you get older, you find that uh, the audience dwindles because the people that used to buy my records back then are now family members and they don't go out anymore. You know, but, but as I said, now the audiences are changing around a little bit. So you get father and son, daughter and mother. And it's kind of cool because it is changing because the kids... Like my kids, they like what I did, and they like what other people did. Say, like you know, White Snake, Alice Cooper, people like that. They like that kind of music, you know, which is cool. And um, so, it's it's always going to be there. And they say, I'm, kids always say to me, "You are the real guys. You're the guys that started all this for the the younger bands, you know, like Zeppelin." There's a lot of bands that are like Led Zeppelin and in uh, Los Angeles, but but they're, they're not quite as, well, they're not fresh, they're not new. I've heard it before. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've noticed, and um, even, I'm only 30, I'm not even like that old, but even for me, like listening to bands that are considered maybe hard rock, or what would be hard rock nowadays, I don't feel the same kind of excitement. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know. I would, I've been asked this question so many times. Is there anything that turns you on on radio now? I mean, there's hardly anything because I, I've heard it before, you know. And uh, it's very hard to say, yeah, I like this band, I like this band, because I hear it all the time from my kids, you know, because they, they played that music. And so I hear that. But um, it's very hard to hear anything new. There needs to be a band come along, let's say, that you go what was that well, and the first the first time that happened to you was when i first heard queen a million years ago i was like she has damn good you know i'm a big beatles fan and I, but i heard this queen thing come out and um wow what what is that and then i heard elo 
which I was almost part of. I was asked to join ALO years ago by Jeff Lynn, and uh, <clears throat> I, I turned the job down. What an idiot! And um, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, that was back in nineteen seventy something. And I went to the studio to meet Jeff Lynn and Roy Wood, who was uh, an another member. There was going to be two bands, Wizard and ELO. And they wanted to interchange members each each night so we could, they could sort of have a, a rotation of members. One night somebody would be playing guitar or another night he'd be playing bass in the other band. So, so um, Wizard and ELO were two bands that they had in mind. And they said to me, can, can you, you, you play bass? And I said, yeah, I play bass. Um, and... Can, can you sing with but we want you to sing with both bands with Wizard and with ELO I said well I don't know if I can do that I said I'm better with guitar than I am with bass I tend to sing along with the bass line sometimes I'm more proficient playing guitar you know rhythm, a rhythm guitar or something you know whereas bass line I'll be oh, boom, boom, boom. I'll, I'll be singing the bass line I'll, I'll I get distracted. My brain doesn't work that way. I can't play drums. Yeah, but it, it is amazing the uh, people who can do it at yeah, the same time. Like Jack Bruce, you know, from Korea. I mean, he, he's, well, John Entwistle was a great bass player. I, I know he didn't sing very much, but John Entwistle and Jack Bruce have always been my favorite bass players. I mean, John Entwistle made the who, as far as I'm concerned. And, um, but uh, Jeff, Jeff Lynn wanted to play... Um, He just wanted to play guitar and not sing. And Roy Wood, his partner, just wanted to play cello. And so it became this like orchestral rock band and I turned the job down. And as I said, that was about 1972, I think, was when they started. I'm not sure. 70s sometime. But uh, I forgot what the original question was now. I have no idea. But anyway, uh, probably doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. I'm uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, for me, this is not really an interview. It's more like uh, just a good... Yeah, good chat, and let's see where we end up. <laughs> yeah, we, we, you got got me a cup of coffee. That was very nice. I'm gonna actually, yeah, chin chin, as we say. Chin, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's always professional to have all this rattling. <laughs> to, to yeah. Sounds very casual and uh, off the cuff. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, you're, obviously you came by plane, you have a bit of a jet lag. A bit. <laughs> Are you kidding? I went to sleep four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Uh, woke up at nine. No, no, sorry, five. I had a call. Fell asleep again till nine o'clock. Got up at nine o'clock. Watch TV because I knew I had, I got to get over this jet lag because it affects my voice and my energy. My energy, no, it's the energy. You have yeah. no energy, you know. And without energy, you've got no voice. You know, you don't. You, you, uh, uh, you croak and everything. So, um, which I'm okay, fortunately. When we've just been rehearsing just now, and uh, so uh, I went to sleep about nine o'clock and then woke up the seven, at seven thirty this morning. So I am still in LA time. And you gotta do a show tomorrow. I know it's a it's a bit of a rush, you know. I mean, I, I normally like to go like a week ahead if it's, you know, a long trip, like to Japan or somewhere. I like to go like well at least four four days ahead, something like to to kind of, you know, get back into the their time, yeah. you know. Yeah, because you can't do that at home. You can't change it. You know, you know jet lags like it, it it kills you. You just feel like crap. I mean, you just last night when I was asleep, I I woke up all sweating and. <sighs> feeling cold and everything. It was very weird. And um, I got a call about, as I said, about five o'clock. Can, can you come down to meet my my, my, my kids? Uh, they want to come meet you. Oh, God. So I said, oh, sorry, I just can't do it. I said, I've, I've got to rest. I feel awful. I feel like I'm going to throw up. You know, I felt so bad. But anyway, I'm, I was okay this morning, so. All right. Well, what, what I also wanted to ask about is, um, what, now that you're here, uh, how do you travel? Do you travel with a band on a bus? Do you have your own car? What's what's it like? They're going to um, we, when we go to Helsinki, we get on a tour bus to, to go there and to the other places that was was mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I, I, those names I, I can't I can't pronounce them or remember them. It's terrible. I, I know Helsinki, and that's it. I know Tampere because I've been here a million times. Uh, but uh, it's usually by bus, and if, if it's a long, long trip, then you take a plane. But but these are all short trips, a couple of hours, or you know, it's it's all around this area, kind of speak. But um, you know, when when um, we play like in Japan, or sometimes we have to take a plane or 
in the States too, you know, obviously. You know, if you're going from West Coast to East Coast, you have to take a plane. You can't drive, take you 10 days or something. So, um, but mostly it's, um, we, we, we hire cars or whatever, if it's close gigs. Uh, it's just a band or do you have somebody with you when you travel or do you just go alone or? Uh, what's... Oh, we go alone. We sometimes take like one guy to, to set up the gear and that's it. You know, it's not like it used to be. You should have 10,000 people to... I mean, sometimes people don't even use amps on stage anymore. You know, it's all just a guitar with, with yeah. you know, and it's all a little thing here. Or a computer. Or, yeah, yeah. And, and no amps. You know, it's all very simple now. So you don't have to take so much gear and it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, yeah I know. I've been carrying... I was um, doing... Uh, ACDC was in Tampere. I was hired help. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was doing and... Uh, I was carrying their bells and the train, yeah. you know, the, and it's like, yeah. who, who wants to ca- If they would have to carry that stuff yeah. themselves, they, they, yeah. they'd drop it in a second. I know. Yeah, when, I, when I was in Rainbow, you know, back in, in the eight, uh, 80s, it was like, we had, I can't remember how many trucks, but it was like, it went on and on, you know, like seven trucks to carry whatever. You know, there was a merchandise truck, all the T-shirts, all the... Key, you know, keychains, blah, 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 blah. Then all the amps and all the wardrobe equipment, etc. stage lights, da, 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 da. I mean, it's the whole bit, you know. But people are playing smaller places now because that's just the way it is, you know. Nobody wants to go and see somebody they've never heard of, you know, especially younger people who are in their 20s or whatever. You know, a lot of them haven't heard of them. But it has changed a little bit. Okay, that was part one of my interview session with Graham Bonnet. I think there's going to be maybe three or four episodes. Let's see. Because there's a lot of stuff and I, I don't I don't even want to cut it other than to just maybe manageable chunks. But I want to just give you straight shooting just like the man is and just give it to you like it is. And there's so much interesting stuff. So definitely come back and check out the other videos and uh, other podcasts I'm going to be doing. And if you're in the area, go and check out those gigs. Definitely tomorrow, Tampere, 15th, Helsinki, 16th, Kovola, and on the 17th, Graham will be in Imatra. So that's his finished tour. And as promised, the band he's playing with, uh, Duffy Terava from Ua, is lead guitarist here. And then uh, the Popeda dudes, Laku Lahtinen and Pata Kivinen on keyboards. A uh, bass player will be Klaus Wirtsenius. Yeah, hi Klaus, how are you doing? He's a good friend of mine. And backing vocals and giving just a little bit of female vocal, Päivi Lepistö and Mina Mikkonen. So that's a stacked band for anyone and you know add Graham Bonnet to that and that is just awesome. If you haven't seen it, you should I don't know, get a train ticket, get a p- private plane or a helicopter and go check out one of these shows. Okay, but see you guys tomorrow. Hang in there. <laughs>